Welcome to the South Atlantic. We left Cape Town uh, eight days ago, I think. Was it eight days? It was. And we're sailing north to St. Helena. We got the big old spinnaker flying. It's been flying for days. We haven't even touched it. And this episode is coming to you via Starlink. A completely new experience for us. We've been out here posting videos, doing Patreon behind the scenes, and uh, yeah, it's completely a game changer for us. So we've received a lot of comments, a lot of feedback, a lot of this and that from the last video, and we wanted to just follow up on that last video before we return to our normal programming, um, which will be us leaving Cape Town. <laughs> We're going to do a little bit of a life update uh, to clarify what we're going to be up to for the next couple of years, which is really important, I think, because a lot of you have commented on that. We didn't fix Noho up just to sell it. We fixed Noho up because Noho needed some TLC and we wanted to live on board a nice boat for the next couple of years, which is how long we think it could take to get this next boat ready. We are working through a lot of things and from initially the design all the way through to the build we have no idea how long that's going to take it could take 12 months it could take 24 months i hope it doesn't take longer than that but in that time we are going to be cruising on nahoa we will take breaks and go home to canada we will go visit the new build but not to worry we are going to be venturing and exploring as much as possible on nahoa for the next foreseeable future so 50 people have already signed up to either build the boat themselves or have the boat built for them. And you know, it's such an incredible response where people love the design. They love the ethos of what we're trying to create here, which is an expedition style catamaran at you know a reasonable price point uh, that you can sail anywhere, anytime. You know, I think what we should start with here is kind of the vision that we sent to Davili's design uh, when we before we even started the process of designing this boat. Do you want to read yours? Sure. It, it's funny because there's two different visions, and uh, you'll know which one's which. Well, because I'm have to read my own, so you'll know it's mine. <laughs> okay, actually, go ahead, read yours. Build a sanctuary for our family and business, a vessel for both productivity and leisure. The craft should embody simplicity and user friendliness in its operation. Indoor, outdoor living should be comfortable, warm, cool, and dry. And by the way, that was not my wording. I think Ben cleaned that up. Yeah, I cleaned it up. <laughs> but, but to give you the perspective where I came from was, this will be an expedition style yacht. Thought needs to be given to redundancy, durability, maintainability, simple systems that are easily fixed and maintain easily accessible wiring. As we will be crossing large distances, boat speed is a major factor. Keeping the vessel light is of utmost importance. Remote places dictate dirty fuel and basic hardware shops. So we're looking for traditional electronic systems. If one system goes down, other systems are not affected. That's quite long and winded, isn't it? It's very long and winded, but it kind of gives you an idea of where our roles are aboard Nahoa currently. And I think Ashley is the female touch, which is very much needed. And I am the uh, fix-it guy, which is also very much needed. To get a boat in, a price, in at a price point that we can afford it is, I think, the biggest challenge. I think we need to talk about aluminium because aluminium is the foundation of all of this. Uh, Probably one of the best building materials for boats is steel. Uh, all tankers are basically built out of steel. It's cheapest chips and uh, uh, it's durable. Aluminium is another great material because it is not as cheap as steel, but it is a lot cheaper. That as well as it's durable. Uh, so you can hit a rock and it won't you know, splinter. It's ductile, so you can bend it. It won't puncture. And also, it is uh, what most expedition-style yachts use for sailing uh, to far-off places. Now, here's the thing. We know it's not for everyone. We know a lot of people will prefer glass boats or e-glass boats or carbon boats, and that's totally cool. That's why there are so many boats on the market. This is the boat that we thought we wanted for, that suited us and the type of sailing we want to do over the next 
10 to 15 years. And there are benefits and drawbacks to every single material that you have. Aluminum, 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 I get caught up because here they say aluminum, there they say aluminum, but anyway, we'll just say aluminum, right? Can I just say aluminum? You can say aluminum. Oh shoot. That's what most of the world says. Okay, so for aluminum, <laughs> we, <laughs> we know that aluminum uh, has its drawbacks and its strengths. and. There are a lot of concern from people out there about having an aluminum, uh, aluminum boat. I'm going to jump in here for a second and uh, read out a comment from um, a, a follower who phrases that really nicely and, and, and emphasizes what the drawbacks are of aluminum. He writes, I'm in Port Hardy, BC. You know where that is? I do. It's uh, on our home island in Canada, north of there. I've been watching YouTube for a long time now. I work in the logging industry as a mechanic. Aluminium electrolysis is pure evil. It's totally manageable. Don't just change the zincs on time and on schedule. Keep an eye on them all the time. Strange things happen in the world of electrolysis. Then he goes on to say, electrical wiring and electrical fields must never ever be allowed near aluminium structure. This is absolutely huge. Stray electric current can chew aluminum. Building a new boat, you have the advantage of making sure all electrical wiring is isolated from the structure. So, electrolysis is pure evil. Aluminum boats aren't evil. It's things that can happen to them though, if you're not careful. And luckily, we're gonna be involved in the build process and we're pretty excited about that part uh, to ensure that, you know, there are no stray electrical fields inside the boat, hopefully. And then after that, you're dealing with sort of known facts which are, uh, if you're in a marina, there's more electricity in the water. Um, so you have to watch out for corrosion there and drop anodes over the side and deal and look at your zincs a lot. We have a lot to learn, by the way. We don't know. We've never owned an aluminum boat. We're going, actually, that's not true. We did own an aluminum boat. It was called the Tintanic. Yeah. <laughs> so Ashley's dad was in the logging industry and, and they always have these, they're called lifetimer boats. They're aluminum open skiffs this boat had been beaten to all hell it leaked like a sieve we had been re-welded we put a hilarious old 30 horse johnson on it old two-stroke 30 horse painted it white because we were only allowed to have a 9.9 .9 and wrote 9.9 .9 on it i think that aluminum skiff had been run up over log booms and into uh all sorts of stuff uh it had dents all over the place and we called it the tintanic <laughs> it still floated, it was hard to kill. We announced really earlier and we were really excited to share with you what we've chosen to do. And we think it's a lot of fun and we want to take you through the next, the process that we're going to be going through over the next few months. We are working with David de Villiers and we are well into the process of design, but there's still so much to do. Basically what we've come up with is a 2D model. So. David de Villiers is still looking at a lot of the numbers, a lot of the, the, the calculations are still being made in terms of sail area versus displacement. Uh, we're looking at wetted surface. Uh, we're gonna run it through some programs to look at the polars. So there's still a lot of stuff going on, which which will take a few more months to finish. But, and by finish, we mean we have to have cut files and everything generated for this new design that he's created for us. So it's going to be, it's quite a process to go through all of this. We don't know exactly how heavy it's going to be yet. We have an idea. We don't know exactly the top speeds we're going to be able to achieve. We have an idea. But we have changed so many things on the boat right now that it's no lot like that we have to do a few recalculations now. The next step is basically getting 3D models of the outside, because right now we're only in 2D. Uh, we want to look at the inside 3D model from the saloon to see the sight lines out to make sure we can see the sails up and everything around us um, and see kind of the proportion of, of everything in the cockpit and, and what how it all fits together because it's really hard to do that uh, on a 2D model with just measurements. Little side note, we have literally been taking the plans, taking the measurements off the plans, measuring them out on our boat and comparing them to what the new boat is. And it has been uh, probably the most useful thing that we've been doing, which is 
is, is this reasonable, this measurement of this doorway, for example? Is this cockpit size reasonable? Um, uh, is it gonna be nice? <laughs> and, and then I measured my fridges last night and I was like, they're not big enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been really wonderful to be traveling and sailing while designing the next boat because we have real time, real world uh, experience right now where we can compare to what we're actually designing. That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, and it's, it comes down to everything, even about sailability. And there's a lot of comments about the forward cockpit. I want to talk about the forward cockpit for a minute. I want to talk about something about the forward cockpit. You see these? It's amazing how much opinion people have about facial hair. I chops, know. man. Like some of the biggest seafarers out there have chops. And the same thing goes for a forward cockpit. People have opinions about it. <laughs> I was not a huge fan of the forward cockpit, putting it straight out there. I said, we'll just have to move it back. It's no big deal. It's kind of grown on me, actually. I'm, I've, as we've been sailing Nahoa uh, the last eight days, because we've kind of been sitting in a marina for a while, sort of come to realize that a forward cockpit where everything is together, most of the time, is a way, way better solution. I mean, everything's right there. You can furl, you can douse, you can reef, you can, I don't know, trim. trim. You can do everything in one little area. It's a sunken area, it's fairly protected. The one thing you'll notice there is I'm working on the side deck. So stand outboard and you uh, grind right here on the side deck. So you're pretty close to the edge uh, in terms of safety. On the new boat, it's all going to be from up here. In the center of the boat, right in there, like right down here, it's going to be right in the middle of the boat. In the center, sunk it down long ways away from anything. The other thing too is on a center cockpit, instead of walking up the side deck to come with deal with something on the trampoline, you can simply walk through the inside of the saloon into the front cockpit, jump up a step and you're up front. So you bypass this whole side area, which is close to overboard territory. However, I did tell Ben if it's ever raining, he's out there doing it. I'm gonna wake him up, he's out. <laughs> the thing that you also have to remember is we're mostly going downwind or with the wind. Um, so people talk about heavy weather, or rough weather, and they think probably about going upwind and spray coming up over the bows. That's not really what blue water cruisers do. They plan their passages and their trips with the seasons to be going with the trade winds. So the wind is coming from behind. So you actually have more protection up there than you do if you're in the aft of the boat. And, um, and some days, I guarantee you, it will not be the most fun to go up to that forward cockpit and step out through that door and get sprayed and deal with the sails. But I but, think it comes down to the 80-20 rule. Like probably that's 20% of the time, if that, and 80% of the time, it'll be the best place to handle the sails from. So everything and every design choice you make on a boat is a compromise. You want that extra fridge? Well, you're going to lose a little bit of speed because that's extra weight. So the other compromise is if you want uh, steering in the aft, well, you're going to intrude into the aft living area because now you have steering wheels and ropes and everything else and everything else back here. I mean, there is an argument for everything. Pro, con, you name it. We've talked about it. And this is where we've landed. The cool thing is, is that this is a boat that is customizable. Yeah, so let's <laughs> it's not a production boat. Let's talk about that for a second. We have contacted David de Villiers. He has taken a design that he already had and then changed it. And I think he's just decided that probably he should have started from scratch because we've changed so much now. However, here we are with a changed boat, uh, the Nahoa boat. So let's talk about the plan and more specifically where you can build it. So once the Nahoa stock 55 plan is done, you can purchase it from Davilia Design. And you can either build it yourself in your own backyard or you can hand it off to a professional yard. Now, there's gonna be multiple yards who will build this design. It is a precise CNC cut file with build, building plans involved that you can literally hand off. There's yards all over the world who we are contacting and David Davilius is contacting who we're looking at to see if they can build this boat. 
what we choose for our yard may not be what you want for your yard. We're choosing uh, a yard that works for us in terms of pricing, uh, import-export duties, uh, political stability, currency exchange rate, and so much more goes into this. You may want to choose a yard in your backyard. You may want to choose a yard that has a longer or shorter build time. Uh, or a longer history of building the boats. Or Each yard is going to have a different contract in terms of payment schedules and what they require from you in that sense. And different uh, capabilities for finishing because finishing is a big thing, right? And some yards will be able to deliver on different qualities of finish. So it really, really depends on what you want with your boat and the budget that you have as to where you will go and take the plan to build it. The other thing that comes to mind is standards. So this boat is designed to be CE compliant. CE compliance is a certification for Europe where if you want to sell into Europe, it has to be CE certified. So these plans are ready to be CE certified uh, as well as exceed the Lloyd's SCC rule. Now, in order to get those standards or the certifications, you then have to uh, employ a yard to have someone inspect your build as it's being built to check the wells, x-ray them, and whatever they do uh, to be certified. Uh, the plans in themselves are certifiable to those standards. Which is really awesome. Well, the weather has changed and I think it's time to wrap this up. What do you think? Yeah, there's... We need to doubt here. We've got our spin running. And there's some dark clouds rolling in behind us. There may be a squall coming. Our first squall. But yes, it's super exciting, this project. And it's breathing life into Sailing Nahoa. It's breathing life into our lives, really. Don't you think? It's a new goal, a new project. You know, it's crazy because we are six weeks away from finishing our first circumnavigation. And we're like, now what? Let's do it again. <laughs> but... It's not as exciting the second time as it was that first time you stepped off the dock to leave to go on your first passage. It's just not the same. But this is really exciting to now be looking at um, being able to do this and go further because Nahoa is not a boat that I would take up further north um, than or further south than what we've just done to Cape Town. Uh, so I am I am really excited to have a boat that we can just go anywhere with. If so if you might be a, a little bit more than interested in a NOHOA 55, if you want to like kick the tires of a NOHOA 55, sign up on our website. Uh, we have uh, a form there which you can fill out and we will be letting you know as we progress through the build and the design uh, as where we're, to where we're at. And we'll fill you in on all the details. Other than that, if you want to follow us as we sail north across the Atlantic, uh, we are doing uh, patron updates, real-time patron updates, uh, only on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, sign up there. Um, and then we also are posting some stuff on Instagram. Day in the life of. Day in the life of. Stuff that's happening. Uh, follow us on Instagram as well. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. We're going to jump back next week to Cape Town. Uh, as we depart on our last ocean crossing. Woohoo! Thanks for watching. I hope this clarifies things for you about some of our decision making process and uh, fills you in on a bit of the details of the new boat. Yeah, we're excited, man. Super excited. Bye for now. Bye.